Hello, in this video I'm gonna juxtapose different kind of models of execution, a single thread execution, an asynchronous uh, execution and multi-threaded execution and I'm gonna talk about the subtle difference between asynchronous and multi-threaded execution. So I'm gonna explain uh, the concepts by writing out uh, some code uh, and I'm gonna do that in C++, but the explanation and the concepts uh, are gonna be uh, language agnostic so and i'm gonna write it in such a way that it the code looks uh, almost like pseudo code uh, so it's just gonna be the same for every language or nearly the same in fact that's why i even wrapped a bunch of uh, functions basically compute means okay perform 2000 uh, computations and they're gonna take 200 uh, milliseconds and uh, it just emulates a real world kind of calculations so the first situation that we're gonna uh, review is just sequential one th uh, single thread execution where everything is executed in sequence we initialize a window the application window uh, then we request send request for data from the server we render that data then we initialize uh, the subsystems of an application and then here we start the work but uh, we only are interested in this example in the initialization part okay so uh, let's run this application So window created, requesting data, got data, rendering data, initializing subsystems, and then uh, initialization is done. So let's calculate how much time it takes uh, for our application to initialize. One second, two seconds for requesting and getting a response, half a second for rendering, and then for subsystems uh, 2.5 seconds so uh, altogether uh, 6 seconds and let's suppose that in our application uh, initializing the subsystems and starting uh, the main app loop does not depend on getting uh, the data so we could initialize subsystems before uh, sending a request uh, so it doesn't matter Moreover, uh, in a real application, uh, it may might not take two seconds to get the data from the server, but it may take uh, one second or two seconds or five seconds or maybe 20 if our uh, network uh, speed is low. And so here we could really benefit from uh, making this function asynchronous so that we say, okay, send request to the server and then just proceed initializing the subsystems and starting the main app loop so now i made this function asynchronous so we send a, re a request to the server uh, for the data and when the response is gonna come uh, we're gonna call render data uh, function and we're gonna proceed with uh, initializing the subsystems and running the loop this here is just c++ specific stuff uh, we don't need to pay attention to that um, now let's uh, run this So window created and subsystem A initialized, then we got data from the server and then we render the data and then subsystem B is initialized, then data is rendered and then the main app starts. And let's suppose now that our response is gonna take longer to come, uh, say not 
two seconds, but five seconds. Now the window is created, subsystems are initialized, and then after on, uh, five seconds, uh, we get the data and we render it. And depending on how fast the response is gonna come, we could, uh, it may come uh, sooner than the subsystem A is initialized, uh, or it may come after uh, subsystem A is initialized or it may come after the main loop, uh, the main app loop starts. Uh, as you could see, as I increased the time, uh, the computation time. So for example, if we say here one, it will probably be done before subsystem A initialization completes. Yeah, as you can see uh, for one second, it completes before subsystem A is initialized. And I used thread here uh, just because uh, C++ doesn't, I mean, it does have uh, async, but I don't really understand how that works there. We take a function uh, that is gonna be called once we get the response from the server. Uh, and we want to render data, so we pass this function in here. Now let's look at a multi-threaded uh, program. So here we've got some kind of data that we need to process, and it's, say, a huge amount of data. Uh, here I just specify 5,000 computations. So it's gonna take five seconds to process uh, the data. And then we get a message that uh, the data processing is done and we exit. And this is all happening on the single thread. So it's gonna take about five seconds to complete. It only takes five seconds, but imagine if it took uh, more than five seconds. For example, if it, take, if it took uh, 10 minutes, but if we could split this task, this huge task. For example, if we had two threads, it would uh, finish not in 10 minutes, but in five. But the amount of work would be the same. And ostensibly, uh, our PC is capable of running multiple threads and it would be faster than running everything on a single thread. And what if we have 10 seconds? So uh, it takes the oh, 10 seconds to uh, execute, uh, which is quite a bit. And we could split this task into multiple smaller tasks and, um, and do them on separate threads. Uh, let's say that I wanna have two threads, process data chunk, chunk uh, one, which is gonna perform 5,000 computations, and another one, the second chunk, is gonna also perform 5,000 computations, and we're gonna have two threads, one is gonna process the first chunk uh, and another one is gonna process the second chunk. And we also need to join the threads, so uh, basically what this means is that here we're gonna wait until the work on the thread one is done. And here we're gonna wait until the work on the thread two is done. Because uh, right now our program has three threads, this uh, main thread and then two uh, other threads. And if we started two threads and without join, we would print data processing is done and just uh, exit the program 
while those threads may still run and do some work. So we're gonna we gotta ensure that um, these threads are done uh, before we print the message that the data processing is done and exit the program. Let's split this in to three batches. So yeah, now it takes not 10 seconds, but three seconds. And it seems like asynchronous function execution and multi-threaded execution is kind of similar, right? Because we do multiple uh, things at the same time. And it is true, so asynchronous and multi-threaded are uh, both uh, types of concurrent programming where uh, there are multiple things being done concurrently in one program. The key difference is that in asynchronous approach, we really focus on the work being done and the result of that work. And in multi-threaded approach, uh, we focus on the threads, so on the workers. So yeah, that's the main difference. Um, so once again, in a single-threaded program, everything we just do everything sequentially. Asynchronous means that we think about the work that's being done uh, in in multi-threaded uh, approach, we think about the workers that perform uh, the jobs. Yeah, uh, thanks.